Now, I know I've got an Irish surname, but you're probably wondering who's this mad Scotsman wearing shorts in the middle of December standing in front of you. Uh, but there's a bit of method behind my madness, so I'll, I'll get to that as my talk progresses. Uh, so as our global population increases, more and more individuals are being diagnosed with cancer. So each year we're seeing around 10 million new cases reported worldwide. And these figures are set to increase by a staggering 75% before 2030. Now luckily, cancer treatments have also progressed. So we're actually seeing a fall in cancer-related deaths. And in Europe since 2011, we've seen an 8% and a 3% fall in both men and women respectively. So it's quite clear that our cancer therapies are quite effective for reducing acute deaths. However, unfortunately, most individuals that go through cancer therapy will present with side effects. So most will experience reductions in fitness, strength and physical function. The individual treatments themselves are associated with their own complications. Surgeries more commonly associated with pain and range of motion issues. Whilst more systemic complications such as impaired immune function or changes in body composition, these are more commonly seen after chemotherapy or radiotherapy or hormone therapies. Now, to combat some of these side effects, exercise is currently it's recommended and prescribed as a, a therapeutic means. And the value of exercise, it's becoming increasingly clear as organizations such as the American College of Sports Medicine, they now recommend exercise to all cancer survivors across their cancer continuum. And the evidence supports the use of both of aerobic and resistance training. However, unfortunately, Unlike the cardiac rehabilitation model, for instance, which it incorporates exercise as a standard of care for its patients who've gone through a cardiac event. Now in cancer, exercise doesn't include, or sorry, exercise is not included as a standard of care. So a patient might present to their doctor who will prescribe them just the general guidelines of 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. And this will include two or three resistance training sessions per week. Now, the expectance that an inactive cancer survivor can achieve these goals and targets is, is unrealistic considering that complications can persist for years following the end of surgery or treatment. The side effects of treatment, they can be combated through exercise, but obviously with the, the complications as they persist for years, we're looking for alternative therapies that, kind of, that can help bridge the gap. So now an exercise, uh, sorry, a cancer, Diagnosis, it's a, it's a life-changing event. So for some individuals, this might lead to increased exercise engagement and improved lifestyle changes. However, for others, this can lead to isolation and a progressive deterioration in their physical function. Now, new, ex uh, new evidence out of Australia suggests that it's the most unwell patients that have the most to gain from engaging in exercise. But as a patient, as they progressively deteriorate, they fall below what could be called a, a functionally independent threshold. So as they fall below this threshold, everyday tasks become difficult. So anything from rising from a chair, climbing stairs, carrying out basic household tasks. Now if a patient, if they struggle to carry out these basic tasks, how can we realistically expect them to engage in exercise? So my research here at UCD is part of the CATCH ITN. We're looking at using alternative therapies to help bridge this gap. And my research is looking at the use of neuromuscular electrical stimulation. So can I just see a quick show of hands if anyone's heard of neuromuscular electrical stimulation? So a couple of people, okay. So for those of you who are, who are unaware, NMES involves the controlled contraction of skeletal muscle. And this is done via electrical impulses. Now these impulses, they're generated by small handheld devices like this, and they're delivered to the muscle through electrodes which are placed on the skin over the target muscles. Now, NMES, it's not a new therapy. It's been used previously as both a, a training and a rehabilitation tool. So anything from augmenting the training of athletes to minimizing muscle atrophy in spinal cord injury patients. So generally, most kind of traditional protocols involve the generation of sustained titanic contractions. And these are generated through high frequency pulses. And because of the high frequency, during each muscle contraction and following each pulse, the, the muscle has no time to relax between the pulses. 
So this generates a sustained contraction, which is quite similar to what we'd experience during resistance training. So a, a usual protocol might involve a series of five second contractions, and sessions will maybe use a one to three work to rest ratio. So a five second contraction will be followed by a 15 second period of recovery. And this cycle will be repeated over a session, which can last anywhere from 50 minutes upwards. And the repeated application of these types of protocols have been shown to improve muscle strength and muscle mass and minimize the loss of muscle mass and muscle strength in more patient populations. Now, the only issue with this type of traditional protocol is it has no impact on our cardiorespiratory fitness. So here at UCD, we're using novel technologies which can generate more rhythmical muscle contractions. And this can kind of kickstart a whole seri series of physiological processes which can train our cardiorespiratory fitness. So that's what I'm going to actually demonstrate for you just now. So this unit here, this is what generates the, the impulses that are sent to the, the electrodes. So under my shorts here, I've actually got on the same garments that will be given to the cancer patients. And you can see the setup there. We've got the garments underneath, and within each garment, we've got four electrodes. We've got two on the front of leg and two on the back. And as I turn the intensity up on the stimulator, it'll start to generate the, the rhythmical muscle contractions. And this kickstarts the whole series of physiological processes. And these are very similar to what we'd experience during a voluntary aerobic training session. So if you just keep your eyes on my legs, you'll start to see them start to contract. And it's starting to kickstart all these processes, making the muscle contract. So my heart rate will start to speed up. My breathing rate will increase. <laughs> if I left this on for long enough, I'd struggle to speak to you. And under these kind of lights, I'd start to sweat. So this is the kind of technology that we're looking to implement into the rehabilitation of, I'll turn this down a little bit, <laughs> into, into the care of cancer patients. And we're looking at combining this with the more traditional protocols so we can target both muscle strength and muscle mass and also improve cardiorespiratory fitness so we can basically I, cover all the guidelines that are currently prescribed to, to cancer survivors. Now, it's not just the physical benefits of these types of technology that make it such an attractive technology in this group. Now, because it's such a small unit, it's portable, so it can be taken home by the patient and it can be used safely, unsupervised. Right, and you can see the setup there. The patient can apply the garments, and they can do this while seated or lying down. So the patient doesn't require as much motivation to actually engage in these sessions. And I think the most important aspect of this type of technology is it can actively engage the patient in their own healthcare. So this means that they're no longer just passing through their journey, uh, their cancer journey, as a, as a passive object. Now this technology is fantastic and it can actually be used in, in healthy populations. But in cancer, if, if patients are motivated and physically capable of doing so, I'd absolutely recommend they, they take part in a, an exercise program which is tailored and personalized to them. But I think for individuals that are experiencing physical barriers, I think we've got a fantastic technology here at our fingertips that can engage them in their healthcare and hopefully accelerate their rehabilitation. Thank you.